All right, then we'll go on to Bright Lights. Jody, would you introduce us to Bright Lights? We have, it looks like we have a wonderful program tonight. We do, we have a wonderful crew from West High School and I'm gonna actually introduce our Associate Principal Athletic Director, Kyle Lemieux, and then he'll uh, take it away with our leaders from West. Well, thank you very much for having us, and I'm going to be uh, lonely only for that moment. Guys, come on up. Let's, let's do this together here. Uh, allow me a brief moment to get online for everyone to see. <laughs> All right. So thank you so much for having us. Um, as Jody mentioned, my name is Kyle Lemieux. I serve as Associate Principal Athletic Director at West High School. This is my sixth year in the role, and uh, I'm just pumped to be able to be here with you tonight. You know, there's certain parts of everyone's job that they get to declare as their passion, and what you get to see on the screen, and more so what you get to see in front of you tonight. That's, that's where my passion kicks in, so I'm excited to, uh, to share with you. Before I go any further, I'll allow these three uh, to introduce themselves and all the amazingness that sits at this table here. So. <laughs> sure. um, I'm Maddie Fry. I'm a senior. Um, I am a part of the track and cross country teams at West High School, and then I'm also part of the executive board for the WLA. Um, the, plan, the planning committee for the leadership conference, the athletics leadership com conference, and then I'm also a board member of Interact Club at Waukesha West. What is WLA, please? It's the Wolver Wolverine Leadership Academy, and we'll be getting into that today. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, I'm Aisha Anshin. I'm also part of the executive committee for WLA, and I'm part of Model United Nations and the Forensics and Debate team. I'm uh, Ben Cameron. I'm also a senior. I, um, I'm also part of WLA, obviously, that's why I'm here. And um, I'm uh, part of the stakeholders branch, and also I played football, and I'll be playing baseball this summer as well. Right up my alley. All right. <laughs> so I'm so excited to have these three. I'm going to kick us off briefly, and then the rest of the night is theirs. So um, when I first arrived at West, I, I was immediately taken back by, you know, everywhere you turn, there's a, a sign, a banner, a plaque, a trophy, some sort of indication of levels of achievement that are off the charts. And in the same breath, very high expectations. And so as a leader, you walk in and you say, well, what's next? What steps do we take to help a building like this, a school community like this, positively grow and move um, in areas where, especially on the outside looking in, it might look like everything has, has already arrived, right? But if, soon enough, as you walk through, you realize there are opportunities. And um, as I began to look for kind of those underlying themes and those root causes, those pivot points where we could really make a difference within our building, we kept circling back around to this idea of leadership and much more so the idea of a student-led experience that would then as a result um, create this transformative atmosphere across our building. And so um, that has taken shape in a few different varieties at West over the last six years. It, it started as a process through our athletic department, and as these three will share tonight, it has uh, given birth to what we now know as the Wolverine Leadership Academy. So I'll turn it over to Ben. All right, so our mission for Wolverine Athletics is transforming aspiring adults through athletics, as it says on there. This idea started in here, but I think that we can move it all throughout the school. Except for instead of athletics, you know, we're also going to go into academics, clubs, activities, just keep people connected inside the school. So as a school, we want people to have a positive influence for the four years that they spend there. It's a short time, but it's really an influential time in people's life. So if they can get this time positively impacting them, that is something that we love to strive for. We want these people to come in, maybe they're not perfect, and they're not going to leave perfect either, but we want them to be better people than they started because we're just trying to make change people for the better. So for me, this was having great coaches and all throughout four years of high school. And uh, one person I'd like to mention um, specifically is John Burton. He's a great guy. He really, really, really taught me some things, even though I knew him all for only a year. Um, he could probably use a pay raise as well, but uh, <laughs> I don't know if you control that. But, uh, <laughs> Yeah, he's a great guy, but he had a positive impact on me. He really taught me to look at life a different way and think more positively. So at West, we're thinking of fighting good, which, you know, usually you fight bad. But we're, we're a good to great school. That's just how we are. So we have to fight this good because, as Jim Collins says, good is the enemy of great. So we want to fight this good. 
because we have really good kids. They know how to lead, but they don't know how to lead to their full potential yet. So WLA can be a great, great, great resource for this. So good, these good things, they happen in pockets, but we would like to create a more systematic method of developing these good things and developing people to the great potential that they have. Right, so like Ben said, we wanted to kind of develop the leaders and one of the ways we kind of wanted to do that was um, on the athletic point of view, we wanted to express that leadership is more than just planning team dinners or designing the team t-shirts or whatever. So um, you wanted, we wanted to have them learn that leadership is sacrificing yourself for the sake of others and intentionally influencing your teammates in order to create an encouraging environment, environment for self-improvement and also to cultivate new leaders. We want um, the, the young freshmen or sophomores to learn from the seniors to create that legacy of um, the leadership at West High School and just create an environment that um, kind of lasts for, for generations. Um, so then, the next slide, um, in order to accelerate the development of this leadership and to kind of teach it in a structured way, we created the Athletic Leadership Conference. And it's been set at a variety of locations and we invite um, a lot of the, the teacher or the coaches invite a selected few of, um, from, of athletes from each kind of um, sport. And then they get together at River Glen Church was the location for the past few years and we have invite guest speakers where they share um, how leadership has taken them in life and how, why they lead and the day includes breakouts by grade level breakouts by team and gender just so the athletes can um, know where their niche is where their leadership niche is in within the athletic department there's fun team building activities we did a lip sync battle on stage um, and then there's also student-led discussion seminars um, regarding different topics related to the importance of leadership. For example, we did Ambassadors Off the Field, it's called, where um, we wanted to teach how to be a leader beyond the field of, of sports. And then leading without a title, how do you lead without being a captain and, and that sort of thing. So um, like I said before, a special part of this was it's entirely student-led. Um, there's a planning committee of 20 students, which I was a part of this year, and they design everything from the music that's being played to the topics being covered in the seminars, and the teachers and coaches are invited, but um, just to listen, just to see what the ideas are coming out of this conference, and it's great. Um, the day is organized, so it's a seamless transfer between the new ideas that are coming up from the, the, the conference, and not have them not just be ideas, have them be um, put into place right away. So I've gone to the leadership conference for the past four years and it's always been great and motivational and inspirational and I just take what I learned there from all my peers and put it right on um, into practice. Um, but this is the first year that I was part of the planning committee and it was a leadership experience in itself in that I had to kind of think through all of these um, seminars and discussions a little bit further and a little bit more in depth and um, I think I came out a better leader because of it as well. So this year we just wrapped it up last month and it went great. Um, it was the most student-led conference so far and I think that speaks volumes. Um, at the end, you can kind of see the schedule there, but at the end there's a pass, pass the torch ceremony that's um, influential in that this, we invite up each class, the freshmen, sophomores, juniors, and seniors, and you kind of um, see the legacy of the leadership and what you specifically you need to do in order to um, last the, the legacy of the leadership. And then you can see the impact with the data presented there. It shows the improvement of the mentality of the athletic leaders. And I believe that that entirely comes from it being more and more student led each year. The people who, the students that are doing this, they're designing the day. Um, so Eat, all the athletes get more and more out of it each year, which I think is very exciting. It shows that they're more motivated and equipped and willing to sacrifice in order to lead others. That's great. So obviously, um, the athletic side of things are going great. And everything in, in West, most of the thing, the drama, the marching band, student council, 
ignition, everything is going really, really well, but they're not, they're all growing in separate, separate directions. They're not growing together. And a big thing was that a lot of um, other groups kind of felt left out or maybe not as valued as, as the um, ath athletes because they didn't have this big, this big conference and a lot of recognition for their leaders. So that's where the idea of the WLA comes in, where they kind of join leaders from different corners of the school in order to create like a fresh, new, um, unique environment to unite the leaders of West High School. So do all the leaders get together from each group mm -hmm. monthly? Right, mo okay, monthly. Great. There's a selected. OK, thank mm -hmm. you. So when the WLA was initiated, the main question that we had was, how do we unify all students? Like Maddie said, West is a large school, and there are many clubs and sports and activities that never really interact. So the WLA became a stepping stone for a student-led initiative where all the discussions are led by students with the help of teachers and staff. And it allows, it allows students to be involved in greater lengths and activities that take place in the building. So we're, in a sense, part of the discussion instead of just hearing what goes on at West. The finding purpose for the WLA is to unite, develop, and empower with student leaders at Waukesha West so we grow more and better leaders that can produce a positive impact on every activity, club, and sport in our community. We want this club to connect all corners of the school and bring in more students as well as develop the leaders that we leave as a legacy. So the WLA began last spring as an idea for juniors and seniors to apply and become members of the WLA. The application process we had was a Google form and students described their resume and the impact they've had on their community through volunteers or jobs. And there was a section of peer recommendation. The reason the peer recommendation was there is because it answers the question, who is willing to follow you? Aspiring leaders or captains of sports and activities have strong leadership qualities and are surrounded by peers who recognize that quality and can give a better explanation for why they should be part of the Wolverine Leadership Academy. So the selection process after you submit your application was done by the West Administration Coach staff. And in the end, the top 66 were selected and now are part of what we call the WLA General Academy. So after the selection took place, um, we wanted to get all of these top 66 together uh, before the school year got rolling. And so in August, we were together, as you can see in the picture there, in the West Media Center. And this was a time, first and foremost, to community build. One of the um, elements that was most interesting to me right off the bat was even though a majority of these students were seniors, even though they were all fabulous leaders in their own right, although they may have known of one another, they didn't truly know each other. And they were kind of, as the, the ping pong ball graphic showed, they were busy having awesome success, but going in different directions. And so serving our first purpose of being able to unite these leaders, it was exciting to see right off the bat, it felt like we chose the right grouping of students because they were able to represent a wide array of voices across our school community. Um, we worked through this idea of what does it look like to recognize opportunities for leadership? and then um, following that up with a change process. And so the activity we did, we broke into small groups, students took their iPads around the building, and their task was to take some pictures of anything that they recognized as an opportunity for leadership, for change, for positive growth. And so this might be something as simple as, you know, oh, that, that hook on the wall looks broken, right? Or um, that, that bubbler filter didn't quite look like it was operating correctly, all the way to there's a blank wall. And to me, that blank wall symbolizes an opportunity. There's something that's missing that I could see really fulfilling a purpose at West on that blank wall. And so they would snap these pictures, come back, unite with a little bit larger group. And as they examined those pictures, their next task was to place them along a continuum of change. And so on one end, we talked about this idea of surface level change. Things that are, are, are good, they're positive, probably quick hitters, um, but they're, they're very um, come and go versus on the other end of the continuum, we talked about these deeply rooted social, cultural impact types of change and kind of a way of life at West High School. What would it look like to change something for the better that has that dynamic? And so they took their pictures or their representations and they kind of spread them across the continuum. Uh, later in the day, we had them work through an activity, as you can see in the picture, where we had a small group that was the, the discussion model in the middle, and everyone else around the outside was just the audience. And uh, their only rule during this conversation was that they could only ask questions. 
There were no solutions. There were no jumping from here to there. They could only respond with another question. So we gave them the, the very hot topic of who selects the songs for these school dances anyways, right? And um, it, it was interesting because this was something that we heard pop up time and again. You know, oh, I can't believe they chose that song for Homecoming, and that made everyone stop dancing, and y you name it. Um, it was an interesting conversation. And so initially, as our model group began to ask these questions, the questions sounded like, well, who makes these decisions? And how do we change who makes these decisions? It was very accusatory of sorts, right? Um, but then it started to turn into... Well, for the student leaders, advisors, for the administrators that need to make these choices, what factors do they take into account when they say yes or no to a song? Um, then all of a sudden it became, well, what makes a song appropriate for school? And then further than that, maybe it's not the song that's appropriate or inappropriate, but maybe it's the behavior that we display during a song that makes it appropriate or inappropriate. And now all of a sudden it shifted into, I suppose as a leader, as a student, I have an ownership in how this plays out over time. And so what started as a very surface level conversation of the song that happened to be on the speakers at a school dance began to really address some, some greater root causes of what does it look like to create a better environment within our building. Um, so that was just a snapshot of what we attempted to do in August and how that springboarded our, our general WLA group into the school year. Right, so after the initial kickoff, day or event. Um, monthly meetings started in September and then the 11 executive board members were chosen to be the leaders of leaders of sorts who run the meetings and facilitate events and represent the WLA in the community. Um, the executive board meets bi-monthly in order to plan meetings and discuss committee plans um, because they're, each subcommittee has two executive board members as their leaders and the subcommittees plan proposals for the entire WLA to, to approve. Um, so one of the main challenges that the WLA faced at first was to differentiate its purpose and its kind of niche in the school with the student council um, at, at West. And the student council is great. It has record-breaking food drives. It organizes a bunch of um, awesome events, success with dances, spirit days. Um, however, a lot of the members of the student council were very similar and, and they were involved in a lot of the same things. So one of the main purposes of the WLA was to, we kind of mentioned it earlier, to unite all the aspiring leaders from every pocket of the school, no matter what um, they're involved with and have everyone have an equal say in decision making and creating a unique environment where there's different ideas coming through that maybe weren't before. Um, uh, and then secondly, the WLA wants to develop the leaders together by addressing and working through um, different student body problems or issues or um, things that arise that they wanted to um, address. And then also um, kind of with the freedom and open-endedness of the WLA, we wanted to um, have them coordinate events that they're really passionate about and find what, um, what they want to bring with the school like themselves. So. And then also the WLA wanted to collaborate with the admi administration to kind of level the playing, playing field between the adult and the student leadership. Um, so our current agenda, um, those are the four subcommittee groups. I am in charge of um, the service committee. And one of our main goals this year was to give back to the local elementary schools in the area. Um, so we've already organized uh, letters to Santa exchange with St. Mary's. And then we also planned a connect day that's going to be with Bethesda that's going to take place on June 1st, where um, the WLA members, we planned a fun field day with a bunch of fun events and um, games with the kids while promoting leadership and connecting the high schoolers with the elementary schoolers. So the next committee is Spirit, and their main goal was always to somehow build the West Spirit and get students involved. So their first activity that they planned was partnering with the guidance office to make baskets for students who are less fortunate at West, and those would be handed out by guidance. The next activity that they planned was the West Woods Project, which is a trail behind West, which is run by a teacher. And they wanted to put benches back there as some sort of legacy from the senior class of 2018.
my committee, personally, I think the best committee is stakeholders. Mm -hmm. And um, one of our main goals is to connect the school. So we thought, what a better way than centralizing everything that goes on at our school. So we facilitated the building of the West Wall, which is a 16 by 6 foot whiteboard that is a calendar. So there's about two feet on the side for notes, so like posters that people want to hang up. And all of the dates are on there. And uh, if you want to get something on there to tell what's happening in the school that day, you just talk to one of the people in my committee who has taken charge of that. And they will put down your event, your time. So it really gives a centralized place for everyone to look instead of running around the school looking for where you're supposed to be and what, what's going on that day. So stakeholders is just to connect the whole school. So the last committee is special events, and it's a little bit different from the rest, but they are involved in making activities that are entertaining and bring the school together. So their goal for this month is the first trivia night at West, and it's run by students, but the teams are teachers and students. So you'll be competing in this trivia night, and you'll have a team with maybe your science teacher or English teacher, and you're competing against all other departments at West, and I think it's going to be super fun. So a few of the early wins that we had, one was connecting. The one thing we mainly noticed right when we started at WLA was the evening of playing fields, as Maddie said. So now the students and the staff are all on the same field. And by opening this area of discussion, students are able to discuss their feelings and goals for the WLA or even their own clubs without feeling pressured that we might say something wrong even though we want the best from the school. And students can be more involved in the planning and execution of processes, which build leader. Because if you want to be a leader, you have to understand the process that goes through to make something happen. So that's what we've learned in the first few months at the WLA. Mm -hmm. Additionally, um, the WLA has also connected people from all around the school, like we mentioned before. And we immediately, from the kickoff event, saw talented leaders from all around the building coming together um, and just meeting each other for the first time, which was very cool. And I think. Um, that's one of the most important things of the WLA is because there's limited amounts of success that can be kind of tapped into when everyone is succeeding on their own, but when you come together, there's a whole lot more success that can happen. And the last early win, building a base. An important goal of the WLA is to build those leaders. So many students who come in, like Maddie said, are presidents and captains of teams and clubs that are all across the school and have different leadership styles. So what I've noticed is many of us have started adopting different styles of techniques that others may use, but we never used. And I've also seen that the juniors and sophomores in WLA have started becoming the new leaders because as we're graduating seniors, we want to make sure that there's still a legacy at West when we leave. Right, and then the next steps, the future goals for the WLA, one is to seek more student input. Um, WLA's goal is to become kind of the student body's way to communicate their wants and a middleman between the administration and the student body. Um, we want to coordinate events that are going to be beneficial for, for us, for the students. So we want to be that, um, that way of the students to have put their input into what, how the school is like for them. So even though the WLA is only 66 students, we want to be able to communicate with those who aren't in the club. So we will send out regular updates and forms to all students at West and tell them about announcements or different actions. For example, we sent out a huge email when the, the West wall went up so clubs knew that they could put their activities on the wall instead of plastering posters all around the school. And by increasing this communication, we also get more people interested in joining the WLA as the application process is starting soon. And we see this as an important impact on the school because you are developing more leaders. And finally, we're trying to also connect to our community because um, we got great things going on at West and we don't just want to keep that inside our walls. We also want to get that out into the community because people might look in and say, hey, that's pretty cool. But we want people to like, say, how can I help make that more cool? So we want to help more than just the people inside of our buildings. So in closing, um, when we look at, oh, we got kicked off. That was pretty good timing. Um, we circle back to this idea of intentional influence. And we have, um, up and down every hallway at West, amazing students. 
But there's a difference between being uh, someone who wants to do the right thing versus being someone who is motivated, equipped, and completely willing, uh, as the data showed in that one slide, to put others before yourself for the betterment of the whole. And these three are shining examples of students who have taken that intentionality and they're willing to go through kind of the murky middle of leadership. And uh, they've seen that it is not always pretty, right? Um, but they've done an amazing job of working through those processes and I think growing uh, incredibly as a result. So thanks for hearing us out tonight and hearing a little bit about uh, West Student Leadership. Wow, <laughs> that's pretty incredible. Questions? Comments? Mr. Baumgart. Comment and maybe a question or two. First of all, I'm very pleased with what I've heard. And particularly the fact that you started off with athletics, but you didn't stop there because that would have led to trouble. I mean, I can just yeah. see that leading to trouble and I'm glad you caught on to that because then you would have had some separations that uh, divisiveness, which actually leads to one of my questions. Uh, how does this interface with or compete with the student council, which is usually also a group of leaders in a, in a school? Right, we noticed that the student council was, um, that was one of our main issues at, at, at first, and we're still trying to work through that. That was kind of the murkiness that Ms. Sandy was alluding to. <laughs> um, but we noticed that student council was a lot of the same um, like type of people, and maybe not a lot of athletes on the student council, maybe lot of, not a lot of drama on the student council. But the WLA, <coughs> it, we want to un unite everyone okay. from the building. And I think we've done a really good job at that so far because there's people who haven't met each other yet. While well, in the student council, they've been there, um, they've been, they're probably all friends. And the WLA, there's people from all over the building that are coming together. Does, does that cause one of those divisiveness issues? I mean, is there, is there competition with student council and have you had to deal maybe elsewhere within the school if you had to deal with any negativity about about this because that would be something would be a, not unusual for you, you sure. know, pe people saying you know you guys are the prima donnas and stuff like that and we don't want anything to do with it yeah I, I think one of our biggest focuses has been um, not to replace, but to uplift yeah. and, and leverage, it. right? And so, for example, one of the other young ladies that's on our executive committee just so happens to be the president of the student council. Okay. Oh, and so okay. um, when we look at an event that student council is putting on, previously they may have had a team of 10 or 12 where they could gather feedback from or attempt to answer critical questions. Now they could bring those types of topics to a board um, or to a grouping of students that represent the entire student body. And although that grouping is not taking over that event, they're able to supply some critical feedback mm -hmm. so that that group can better their event or, or cause, whatever it might be. So yeah, merging mm -hmm. to, to help eliminate the problems of competition. Absolutely. Thank you. Ms. Ranchuk. Thank you. And that's pretty healthy too, as you grow as leaders, you're gonna have to tackle other things that are coming. And um, yeah, that's just one of those things you're gonna have to work through and then you'll be better <coughs> leaders and so are they. And this whole thing is just a trickle down effect and it's it's just spreading. And thank you, Kyle, for, for seeing a need and, and uh, just the way you said that there's good leadership at West, but how can we make them better? It's just, that's great. So I have some questions for you guys, but I have Maddie and Ben. What is your name again? Aisha. Aisha, thank you. Um, okay, so I thought you said that there were 200 students that went to your conference, but that there's only 66 actual students in your club, right? So did they choose not to be in your club or was it more of an outreach? How did that work? Good, good question. So the 200 was in reference to our athletic leadership conference. So that conference has actually been going on for the past six years now. So that's kind of an established entity where coaches nominate leaders from within their programs. And that builds up to roughly that number of about 200. So that concept of leadership development within that athletic leadership conference is what has kind of given way into the Wolverine Leadership Academy where we went through a selection process, applications with students, and ended up selecting those 66 students. Okay, and 
So there was some overlap, like many of the 66 could have been with our athletic conference that day, but not necessarily all. Okay, and thank you. And then um, how did you choose your board? Uh, the initial 11 was chosen and nominated by like the 66 students. And then by we delegated the rest of the 11 by who was interested in what topic, like Maddie's in a lot of service clubs, so she decided to go on the service committee. And then the top three positions, the president, the vice president, and then the communications director was just kind of handed out. Okay. And then when do you meet specifically as a board? Is it once a month? And then is it during school? Is it after school, before school? And then I think you guys meet once a month as the 66. Mm -hmm. And then when does that meet? Bi-monthly. So we meet every two weeks at lunch. We meet just, just the exec board during lunch, and then once a month during a class, we get out of that class and we come to the WLA meeting as the GA. Okay. Just check my notes, see if I got everything. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, the biggest one, I probably should ask this one first. So when you started, you guys were already, were, were you in the initial, no, it's been around six years, so you weren't in the school yet, right? Okay, so how did you initially find leaders to, to actually start this? Did you handpick them, Kyle? Or? W within the 66 that, are, that make up our uh -huh. Leadership Academy now. Um, so what we did last spring was we started floating this idea out there of, you know, here comes this Wolverine Leadership Academy. It was hovering at about 10,000 feet because it was theoretical at the time. And we were basically trying to recruit students who wanted to make a positive impact within the building specifically citing that we want we want everyone we want every corner this isn't meant for one grouping or one style or type of student and um, so the the application process w went through that and we had over a hundred students apply wow. and we didn't necessarily go into it knowing that we would choose 80 or 50 or 66 we just continued to vet through committee after committee and ended up feeling like those 66 students were the change makers that we feel like would be a great fit within this first group um, sometimes when, I think you guys did this with Sale, Jody, where if you're going to take on uh, a leadership role, that first group of students would actually um, be led and, and be educated, if you will, on uh, a new practice or something. And then they would then go and teach the others what they've learned. But you just sought out the, the kids that already had that leadership quality and you let them teach what they knew. And then you will, do you guys come alongside? I mean, some things that you've said are um, like who's willing to follow you and sacrificing self for the sake of others. Like, do these guys come up with that? Or are you <laughs> sliding in some dessert along the way so that they are just really more enriched and... Yeah, I've, I've learned the secret over time is that if, if we can have a small group who are highly motivated and we can invest really well into them, they can deliver it to their peers far better than any adult can. And you know, I could have the most perfectly scripted speech and compared to anything these three say, uh, it would be an incredible disappointment to those <laughs> students at West. It's just um, these three, as an example, have an awesome way of being able to take potentially adult-like concepts and really challenging leadership philosophies and being able to implement them with their peers. So the idea would be, yes, that we're able to invest in them and be able to develop these, these principles and these big ideas, but then they're able to take them back into their clubs, into their teams, and even to implement it in every day in our classrooms. Okay, and I know I said that was my last question, but I thought of one more to end it. Uh, so now that you're all leaders and showing all these leadership qualities, you're gonna go into college, I'm thinking, I'm, I'm assuming with your leadership, wherever you go, you're gonna be leaders, but um, you might find yourself a lot more advanced in that area, but you're gonna be the young ones. So how can you take this to where you're gonna go next and try not to ruffle any feathers? Right, there is actually a um, one of the discussions at the athletic leadership conference kind of about this it was called like leading without a title and I think um, just how you conduct how I've learned to conduct myself as a leader and how I have my things that I want to get done and even though I'm not the oldest in the room or the the loudest in the room 
I can use my certain leadership style in order to get the things that I want to get done done and if um, and I think teamwork is like is a big part of that um, but yeah I, I see your, I see your point I've been in a situation already where I've I have, I've been younger and I wanted to be more of a leader than my peers maybe would want me to and I think that just develops me more as a leader um, yeah I think it makes it me more stronger too we had the same question or discussion topic come up at our model UN conference and it's not just between West it's a bunch of schools around Wisconsin that we're talking about this and we kind of came up to the conclusion that being a leader is not necessarily going up to a podium or being at the front of the discussion. It's also the amount of work that you put towards helping others. So you might not be there like delegating tasks out, but you could be there helping a student on the side and you'd still be leading someone at least. Okay, anything else? Well, I, I, I could talk to you an hour about how wonderful I think what you're doing is and why. Because certainly from whence I came in high school, um, leadership was not encouraged and leadership um, aspects were entirely different. I don't know if Mr. Baumgard can agree with me, but um, you know, I went to a parochial school and the, the nuns were in charge. And they didn't too often ask or care about what the student body wanted. So when, when I graduated from high school, I, I didn't have you know, an ounce of leadership skills. And you know that happened along the way in my life. But this is so wonderful that you are preparing students to go to college. And that leadership, those leadership qualities that you are having students experience and develop, they'll carry with them their entire life. This is phenomenal. I was wondering where the whole idea of this got started and why. I, I think it goes back to maybe those first couple of slides where if, if you base success around something like talent, for example, yes. talent comes and goes. Um, it's, it's, it's fleeting. But if we can find ways to invest in young men and women that give them skills and strategies that are not only going to pay off now as high school students, but they're going to make them better college students, better mothers, fathers, right. sons, daughters, employees. That's right. Um, those are the wins. I, myself, as not only a, you know a leader, as an administrator, as as a coach, I, I love when we see former kids come back and and demonstrate. Man, this meant the world to me. In fact, this year at our leadership, uh, athletic leadership conference, someone who was on one of our first planning committees was on spring break, and he asked me if he could come hang out for the day. And I said absolutely, and he was in the room uh, during one of the first conversations where it, there was a pivot, where instead of it being you know, Mr. Lemieux's thing to lead and plan, they basically said, you know, thanks, but can we do it? Because we're ready. And, you know, I talked about that day with all those other students that look at the legacy that he left and he didn't even know it. Mm -hmm. So what opportunity lies before you to leave a mark with those who are willing to follow you? And so. I think that ideas about leadership in the past were the, the leader was the boss. Mm -hmm. And I don't see that anymore. Any, any, everybody has leadership skills. Everybody has the ability to um, lead, but you have to be given an opportunity to do it. And here you are giving an opportunity to you know, a, an entire student body. That's pretty incredible when kids graduate with that. Now, is your goal to have every student in the building participate or you know, um, a, a small representative. I would group. say the goal is to have every student be influenced by the okay, work that this right. group good, does. Good, um, good. But it's got to start somewhere. That's right. That's right. And how um, did you work with the administration in initiating this whole concept in the beginning? Because um, it takes away some power. It's a bad word, but it takes away some power from administration. So how did that go? Yeah, well, I, first, kudos to Mr. Ryan Pat sitting behind me, being fully supportive of being able to see this implemented at West. But I think we share in the philosophy of, at the end of the day, um, we want this to be their school, to be That's their right. experience. You know, it's That's our right. job to, to guide and to mentor and to do the things that need to be done in certain yeah. times, but um, they need to be able to feel empowered. Mm -hmm. And we have found very quickly, and guys yell at me if I'm incorrect here, but uh, when they're able to take the ownership, it means more, and frankly, it turns out so much better. Of course, of course. You said, you said it perfectly, of course. 
and you're sending some wonderful students into the, the next level of education or work or wherever you go with, with already developed leadership skills. And it does include highly getting along with others. And that's so important to learn that when you're, when you're so young because, uh, you know, it's a tough world and we have to learn how to get along with all kinds of different others. And I, I see that <coughs> emphasis. I can't thank you enough or appraise you enough for empowering students to provide leadership within a school because your school is so much more effective and their education is so much more powerful. So thank you for your leadership and thank each one of you for being here and for your excellent communication skills in um, helping us understand what's going on at West. I'd love to come and visit sometime and see it in, in action. So Anytime, we'd you. love to have you. Thank you so much and congratulations to you. Thank you everyone. Thank you.